And this is the piece. This is the, this is the hard truth. Okay. This is why I said the truth of, of empowerment is taking the self responsibility. If you realize, oh, wait, I am being passive. I am playing the victim. Okay. How do I flip that script? How do I change that? Welcome to My Orgasmic Life Podcast, a show that where we talk about sex, love, relationships, and kink. And of course, my favorite part, I share with you my very graphic, very juicy, and always entertaining orgasmic life. I'm Guy Morissette, your hostess, and your holistic sexual wellness specialist, your trauma healer, your BDSM expert. And of course, your pro dominatrix. Mm. <laughs> the show was inspired to inspire you to support your orgasmic living. Remember, always check the content warning before you listen and make sure you're listening where no one else can hear it because you never, ever know what I'm going to say because I always come with an explicit graphic content warning. <laughs> now, strap in and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of My Orgasmic Life. All right. So, first of all, let's say I love and adore you, audience. Thank you. Today's episode is going to be called the truth of empowerment self-responsibility all right this is another uh this is another healing episode uh where we're going to dive deep into our cognitive understanding and our brain and our behaviors and you know from the therapeutic and psychological aspects of life so if you're like oh oh gaia i want to get into where you get to have sex <laughs> That's not going to be one of those episodes. <laughs> hey, so make sure you check the content warning so that you don't end up in something you don't want to be in. Okay, so the truth of empowerment, like the real T truth of empowerment is self-responsibility. The self. Taking responsibility for our decisions, our actions, um, you know, what places do we play? So, so this, this was inspired from, I spend a lot of time in my coaching practice um, doing a lot of work around mindset work and cognitive reprogramming, as well as, um, you know, course correcting uh, behaviors that are not serving people, that's interfering in their ability to have sex, their inability to have orgasms, their inability to have sustainable relationships, love, all these things. And the biggest part of that piece is being the victim. Okay. So, and when I say being the victim, I'm not talking about where you are truly a victim in a circumstance, in a situation that was out of your control, completely out of control. Um, and, you know, there was zero consent and violence or childhood experiences. I'm not talking about any of those pieces. Okay. I'm talking about there's many ways in which life can seem like it's happening to us where we feel out of control and we feel like we're the victim. And in that state, we are not, we are reactive. We are not responsive, which means we're not empowered at all on any level whatsoever. Empowerment is moving from in the world as a place of responding to the world, responding to experiences, responding, choosing. The word choosing is your bestie, is your best friend. I choose. <laughs> I choose to be happy. I choose to be angry. I choose to be afraid. I choose 
to do something different. I choose to put that, you know, chocolate bar down. I choose the source of empowerment is choice. And choice starts with us, the self, taking ownership, taking responsibility, being, because if I'm responsible for everything that happens in my life, then that means I'm responsible to change all the shit that I don't like, which is awesome because then I get to change all the crap I don't like. But if I believe that life is happening to me and I am have no say and I'm a victim in the circumstances, I have no power to change it. I just have to, I just have to survive and just put up with it. And, 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 you know, maybe somebody will rescue me or maybe circumstances might happen, or maybe I'll win the lottery and everything will be better. Or maybe, 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 where the reality is, is if you move from, I choose to do something different, then you have the power. You have the power. That's right. You have the power. So let's talk about relationships because that's where this shows up a lot. Okay. So you're in a relationship and often one of the major, you know, I mean, there's lots of major uh, relationship issues, but one of the major relationship issues is around sexless. And people end up in sex relationships for lots of reasons. Um, and I'm sure I've done an episode on that. <laughs> how to get out of your sexless marriage. How to change your sexless relationships. Um, <laughs> I don't know the number off the top of my head. But here's the thing. You played a part in your sexless relationship. Whether it's not communicating, asking for what you want, um, having conversations early on in your relationship to find out if you're sexually compatible, um, you know, there's choices to be made about uh, if you've chosen a monogamous relationship and so you only have one option, which is your partner. Um you there's there's ways in which you've contributed even as far as like things like being passive in the fact that you are in a sexless relationship instead of saying hey we're in a sexless relationship this shit's not okay and how are we going to fix it if you're passive that means you're being the victim in your sexless marriage or your sexless relationship you aren't a victim you're choosing to be a victim. And this is the piece. This is the, this is the hard truth, okay? This is why I said the truth of, of empowerment is taking the self-responsibility. If you realize, oh, wait, I am being passive. I am playing the victim. Okay, how do I flip that script? How do I change that? How do I do something different? Well... First thing is acknowledging it. Second thing is uh, if you really want to understand all the places that you show up in, you know, being the victim or a martyr and really dive into it. I wrote this fabulous book, which you can see everybody's watching uh, behind me is called Stop, Drop and Wiggle, Seven Easy Steps to Happiness. This is a fantastic book to help you understand how your brain thinks, why your brain thinks, why you choose, why you don't choose, why you might be a martyr, why you might be a victim, <laughs> all things, and gives you some seven easy steps to start to reprogram those behaviors and those patterns, okay? Again, stop, drop, and wiggle, seven easy steps to happiness. You can find it on Amazon, and you can also find it on my website at guymorissette.com. Um, second thing is, so one of the reasons we don't want to take responsibility for things is one, we live in a society that hasn't really programmed us or teach us or 
reinforce that taking responsibility is a good plan. <laughs> so I'm going to throw society under the bus for a second there that we really haven't been taught to do that. So it's not actually necessarily your fault that you don't know how to do this because it's not taught, it's not facilitated, it's, there's not mirrored. Um, what's mirrored is to blame everybody and everything else. That is what we're taught, that is what is supported, that is what, we're, what we see, okay? So, so that being said, here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity to learn this new skill, to really hone in how do I take responsibility for my life and my choices and my experiences. And in the extended version today, I'm going to, I'm going to teach a couple of exercises on how do we kind of start to start to recognize and see how do we move in a little bit differently around that and how we can start to observe when other people are doing it. Um, and then, and then we can then look at, oh, wait, we do that too. All right. So I'll talk about that in the extended version today, which you can get once you become a Patreon member for as little as $5 a month. Um, so empowerment. When, again, I'm just going to re, I'm just hammering at home. When we take responsibility and we figure out what part did I play in this scenario, then we can make a new choice. And once we get to make a new choice, this beautiful thing happens. We are now in charge of our lives. We are now in a place of power, empowerment. We are not just waiting for shit to happen. Somebody else is going to fix it. It's like all of those things. That is the worst place to be. There's no power in there. There's no empowerment. The only state is panic, anxiety, stress, worry, nervousness, all the things, all the very unpleasant emotions that life has to offer you. <laughs> and not that unpleasant emotions are bad. They're not bad, but they're definitely unpleasant. Where the pleasant emotions live is where we get to choose how we're going to live, how we're going to deal, how we're going to respond to life. So I'm just going to remind you, there's a difference between reacting versus responding. All right, let me see if I can come up with like a brilliant, a brilliant example of this recently. Okay. Yesterday. <laughs> this is a really minor one. Okay. But so I use this statement all the time and you'll probably hear me say it. I, you know, say it in the podcast, but this is a statement that you will hear often out of my mouth is like, wow, that's an interesting life choice or is that really the best life choice? You sure you want to make that choice? Is that the best life choice? Maybe that wasn't the best life choice. Okay. So this is a statement that I say all the time. So yesterday I got to go out and I got to go do a bunch of shopping and a bunch of different stores uh, before I go get my weekly massage um, for my body. And um, I haven't really been you know, I haven't been feeling well for the last couple of weeks because of the weather and having, I've been having a lot of migraine issues. And so I really haven't been out in the world since we've kind of made it change from mandatory mask to not mandatory mask very much. And so I'm in the store and I have my mask on, my mask on, and some people don't have their mask on and, and everybody like energetically is kind of, you know, cause I'm very intuitively sensitive in that regard. And so like the world seems like it's a, like chaos out here, <laughs> complete chaos. 
So I pull into the gas station and I'm in the gas station and I'm standing at the pump and I'm putting my cards in and I'm pushing the buttons and nothing's happening. And I'm starting to like get like, you know, frustrated. Like, why is this happening to me? Like, why is this happening? Which is that, that place of why is this happening to me is the, the, the first indicator, your early warning system that you are not moving from a place of responsiveness, but from a place of reactiveness. And you're starting down the path of playing the victim <laughs> where shit's happening to you. Why is this happening to me right now? That's a, your early warning system. <laughs> and then I look down. And I look down at the pump and there's this giant sign that says out of order. <laughs> and so I start laughing and I'm like, wow, that wasn't a very good life choice. <laughs> I should have like actually taken a moment, pay paid attention, looked at the whole pump before I made the choice to park where I parked, to choose that pump. I chose that pump. The pump is wrong. It isn't working because it's out of order and I didn't bother to pay attention to read the sign. So I'm sitting there and I'm laughing. And I'm like, wow, that wasn't a very good life choice. <laughs> Again, the minute I went from, why is this happening to me? And I was frustrated and I was angry and I was like, I was about ready to kick the pump and blah, 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 to, all of a sudden I'm like, start laughing about it not being a good life choice that I made, which was, I didn't pay attention. I wasn't aware. I didn't, you know, I chose this pump, all this stuff. Then my whole emotional being internally went from, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to run, I'm running behind time. How is this happening to me? Why does this always happen to me? Like a whole storyline about how like the world is out to get me to, wow, all right, so next time I'll be more aware and pay attention a little bit. And when things aren't working, maybe I should look around instead of like struggling <laughs> and find out. Let's, let's find out some information first, figure out why, instead of still struggling and getting emotionally reactive. Immediately, my whole body felt differently. My emotions felt differently. I'm laughing. I'm laughing at myself. You know, I wasn't like, oh, I'm so stupid. I didn't do that. That's not what I said. I'm like, wow, that wasn't about, that was not the best life choice. There's no judgment in that statement either. I didn't judge myself. I didn't call myself names. I didn't, I didn't fail. I, the world didn't come to an end. I just had to wait for the woman in front of me to finish paying her gas and finish doing her gas and then drive up so that I could drive up to the gas and fill my tank. So that's just like one little example of a moment in my day yesterday that could have gone sideways if I had allowed myself to go down the rabbit hole of shit is happening to me and the world is out to get me. Things like I get a red light. So I'm like, all right, I guess going down this road wasn't the best life choice. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> next time, if I'm a hurry, maybe I'll take the highway and not take the long way with all these lights. Oh, well, while I'm here, I might as well do some giggles. That's empowerment. That is orgasmic living. That is um, adapting, choosing, and, and learning and growing. And not blaming anybody, not blaming me, not blaming the world, not blaming the universe, not blaming God, not blaming the person who is in front of me moving really slow. That was the day I was having yesterday. And I could just go along with it and laugh about, oh, this is one of those days where I'm just not making good life choices. Because <laughs> then I went to the grocery store and it was, didn't get any better. Every aisle I went down was blocked by somebody who was moving at a very slow pace. 
so it was like, and I just would giggle and laugh. Wow, this was not a good life choice. Oh, well, might as well do some giggles. La, 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 la. I'll get there when I get there. And I would say that is what I want to leave you with. It's like just taking that little moment, the little moment of that I am responsible for this, which means that I have power in it, which means I can course correct either how I'm going to respond in the situation, learn from it, make a new choice next time, and maybe that choice will work out better. But either way, I made the choice, and so I'm handling whatever that choice is. And it feels amazing. I just need to say this to you. Like, it feels incredible to not be in this place of chaos and crisis and, and things happening to me. And because I don't feel like things are happening to me, guess what? I don't have to be a control freak either, which is why I am a recovering control freak, <laughs> is that I don't need to try to control the world around me. The only thing I need to control is my response to life, my response in situations. So taking all of that exterior control to try to feel safe and stable and calm in the chaos. Um, now I just get to choose how I'm going to move in any situation. And so therefore I feel incredibly empowered in it. And life doesn't ever happen to me. Ever. I don't feel that feeling. Well, sorry. I have moments of about to feel those feelings, like I was telling you about yesterday. And then I course correct. And then all of a sudden, I'm not in that, I'm not in that panic state. I'm not the victim. I'm not the victim of life. I'm not the victim of circumstances. I am not the victim. I'm, I'm running my life. I'm running the train. I'm in control of the narrative of how I move in the world and my response to how I move in the world, which makes me truly empowered. But the only way I got there was to take responsibility for the parts that I play in this situation. As at the gas station, I chose that pump. That pump didn't lure me over there. That pump didn't seduce me to choose it. It's not the pump's fault that I didn't pay attention to the big giant sign on it. It's not the gas station's fault that they have a, you know, that, that, that I chose that pump. They did their due diligence. They put a giant sign on it. So that's what I want to leave you with. Okay. Um, again, stop, drop, and wiggle. Seven easy steps to happiness. Trust me, it'll change your life. It's a fun read. It's easy to read. I broke it down really easily, and it's a great bathroom book. So you can uh, read a chapter, learn something while you're having a poop. <laughs> um, a past episode that I, you might be interested in and is kind of fascinating about control <laughs> and manipulation <laughs> and feeling safe and why we do that is uh, episode 170, understanding why others try to control us. So that's a really good take to look at why other people do it so we can see maybe why we might be doing it. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, as always, I love and adore you. And I'm really, really proud that you come and hang out with me and listen to things that may be a little uncomfortable and concepts that may be like, mm, I don't really want to look that, but you like keep coming back and listening. So thank you. And thanks for being on this adventure with me. 
Here's to my orgasmic life. All the things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> so don't forget to check out the extended version. Join my Patreon for as little as $5 a month. All right. Till next episode. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, I hope today's episode inspired you, encouraged you, and of course, made you feel tingly inside. <laughs> I just want to take a moment to tell you how much I appreciate the time that you spend and how I really deeply appreciate you listening. I do it for you guys, the audience, and I love and adore you guys. So, Quick loving reminder, I am not available for naked pictures, getting married, having sex, or having anybody's babies. And when you want to spend more time with me in a professional capacity as your coach, your teacher, your educator, your facilitator, um, you can reach me at GaiaMorissette.com. That's the gateway to all things Gaia. Now, if you're like, oh, I really wonder what's in the extended version. <laughs> well, find out on Patreon. Come join my Patreon for not only the extended version of this episode, but also bonus content behind the scenes, all sorts of juicy, juicy stuff. I also lovingly invite you to follow me on Instagram, which the handle is My Orgasmic Life Podcast where you can leave feedback and comments. Mm. Also come join me on Facebook, uh, My Orgasmic Life Podcast Facebook group. And I really want to hear from you. I want to know how this show affected you. Did you. What did you learn? Was it inspirational? Did you agree? Do you disagree? Um, you know, I want, I want to know because I'm a little bit of a voyeur. So I want to know what, how am I affecting you? <laughs> So please, please, please come leave some comments. Now, if you're like, but I don't want everybody to know what I'm thinking, which is okay. Sometimes we need privacy and we need to be anonymous. So you would like that option? We have that. You can email my slutty assistant, Layla at GaiaMorissette.com. Okay, listeners, until next time, may your life be filled with sexy exploration and orgasmic pleasure. Bye-bye.